This is the first in a two video series about types of reactions. Chemical reactions can be kind of sorted into some categories, which makes it easier for us to see the patterns and predict what kinds of products are going to be formed when certain reactants react with each other. In this video, we're going to tackle two of these types, which are called acid-base reactions, or acid-base neutralizations, and precipitation reactions. We'll do acid bases first, and to understand how acids and bases neutralize each other, we need to understand what acids and bases are. So let's define acids. The defining characteristic of an acid is that they, they donate protons in a reaction. Let's look at this example of an acid reacting with water. Now, the bond that makes the hydrogen and the chlorine, that's a shared pair of electrons, and one of the electrons in that bond comes from hydrogen, and the other one comes from chlorine. If we look at this with Lewis structures, it's a little bit easier to see that, and I'm not using sticks for the bonds, I'm just showing the electron pairs. The red dot represents the electron that was originally part of hydrogen. A hydrogen is only a proton and an electron. And when these reactions take place, only the proton leaves, and it leaves its electron behind. And when that happens, that creates an ion, a pair of ions, really. Because that proton added to water does not add any electrons, but it does add a proton. And so this ends up having a positive charge. And then because the electron stayed behind with the chlorine from the hydrogen, it now has an extra electron, so that makes it an anion. What are the types of things that are acids? Well, one thing is molecules that contain weakly bonded hydrogen atoms. Later on, we're going to understand why some hydrogen atoms are more weakly bonded than others, uh, but we're not going to give a lot of details about that. But here are some clues. If you're looking at the formula and H is listed out front in the formula, that's probably an acid. And often the name of the compound will end in acid. So hydrochloric acid, the one that we saw in the example just a little bit ago, is, is one of these type of molecules that has a weakly bonded proton that will easily release to bond with something else, water in this case. Here's another one. This is called sulfuric acid. This actually has two protons that will be easily released and can produce two of these ions. These H3O plus ions are called hydronium ions. So this is what actually happens with uh, these strong acids when they react with water. But there's another way of modeling this that just leaves the waters out. Um, and this is kind of an alternative notation. Instead of writing water and hydronium on the left and right, respectively, you just leave the water on the left out, and you just show the extra proton as a loose proton on the right-hand side. Both of these are perfectly acceptable. Another type of acid is a non-metal oxide. And the reason that these are acids is that they react with water to form acids. So an example of this is carbon dioxide. If you blow carbon dioxide uh, in, with a straw into water, it will m form an acid, H2CO3, carbonic acid. Then that acid can break down to protons and CO3 2 minus. Actually, what it does, of course, is react with water to produce hydronium ions and carbonate ions. But that's basically what happens. Now, the one-way arrow is a little bit of a misrepresentation. And later on, we're going to find out that this should have like a two-way arrow because this doesn't go completely to products like the first two did because it is not what we call a strong acid. But more about that detail in a later unit. Another name for these non-metal oxides is acidic anhydrides. An means not, and hydro means water. So these are like acids without water. If you put them in water, they become acids. Next, bases. Bases are just the opposite. Instead of donating a proton, bases accept protons in reactions. So in the example that we started out with, where hydrochloric acid was donating that proton, water was functioning as a base because it accepted the proton from the hydrochloric acid. So what are the types of bases? Well, probably the most common in general chemistry are soluble hydroxide compounds. These are the easiest to understand, too. So, for example, sodium hydroxide will completely split up in water and that releases OH minus. OH minus is kind of the strongest and it's the classic proton acceptor. It'll take a proton from something, like water for example, and that makes it function as a base. So hydroxide ion and water will just make two waters because it'll accept a proton from the water, which makes the water a proton donor. And so that makes water an acid, which is weird to think about, but 
it is. So there's some context in what is an acid and what is a base. Because when water was with hydrochloric acid, it was functioning as a base, not an acid. So some things can do both. Another type of base are some molecules that are good at accepting protons. Kind of the classic one is ammonia, NH3. If you put ammonia together with water, it will accept the proton from the water, and that results in ammonium ion. So the ammonia didn't get any more electrons, but it did get a proton, so that makes it positively charged now. And then the water kept the electron that was originally part of that hydrogen when it made that bond in water, and so that gives that OH coupling an extra electron, so that makes it an anion. Another type of base is a metal oxide that reacts with water to produce hydroxides. So non-metal oxides react with water to produce acids, they're acidic anhydrides, but metal oxides react with water and they produce these hydroxides. So for example, if you put K2O, potassium oxide, in water, it'll make KOH. KOH dissociates to give you hydroxide ion, and hydroxide ion does what we have just seen in the last couple slides to function as a proton acceptor. So these things are called basic anhydrides because they're bases that just lack water. An acid-base neutralization is just a proton exchange between an acid and a base. So here's an example of that. HNO3 is an acid. That's a molecule that has a weakly bonded proton. And if we expand this to an ionic equation, H plus plus NO3 minus, we can do that because that's a strong acid. And then K plus plus OH minus, we can do that because KOH is going to be completely soluble because potassium is a group one. We get water, which I'm just going to leave as HOH. And then we have K plus plus NO3 minus. And then if we look for our spectators, potassium and nitrate are both spectators. So the net ionic reaction is just this proton gets donated to hydroxide to make water. This is the acid, this is the base. Another example, again, we're going to make this into an ionic, H plus plus Cl minus. NH3 is a molecule, it's not an acid, so we can't split it up. This is an ionic compound. It's NH4 plus plus Cl minus. Chloride is the spectator, so the net ionic reaction is a proton gets donated to an ammonia to make an ammonium. Here's another one. Uh, acetic acid is not a strong acid, so we have to keep it together. H, C2, H3, O2. Ammonia, we can't split up either. Uh, but this we can. NH4 plus and C2, H3, O2 minus, which is called the acetate ion. Uh, this is actually the net ionic reaction. Uh, we can see that there was a proton donation that was going on from here to there. The acid donated a proton to the base and created an anion and a cation. Now, this is an example of a reaction that could go both ways because these, neither of these are strong. They're both weak, weak acid, weak base. And this uh, allows us to introduce the idea of something called a conjugate acid-base pair. The acetic acid was the acid and ammonia was the base. But on the other side of the reaction, we have something that could donate a proton. And we've seen NH4, I think, do that already and something that could accept a proton. So each weak acid and each weak base in a reaction like this has a what's called a conjugate on the other side. So the conjugate base of acetic acid is the acetate ion. And the conjugate acid of ammonia is the ammonium ion. Conjugate acid-base pairs differ only by the presence of a proton. So that means the base will have one less H and one less positive charge and the acid will have one more H and one more positive charge. So the conjugate base of HF would just be F minus, lacking the H, one step more negative. Conjugate base of H2SO3 would be HSO3 one minus, one less H, one step more negative. Conjugate base of HSO3 one minus is SO3 two minus, one less H, one more step negative. The conjugate acid of CH3NH3 would have to have one more proton. So one more H, one more step positive. So CH3NH4 plus would be the conjugate acid of that base. There are some things called acid salts. So there are salts that have anions that are themselves actually acids. We can see this from an example. 
Uh, let's do the ionic equation for this. 2Na plus plus 2HSO4 minuses plus 2K plus plus 2OH minus makes water. You can split this one up. 2Na plus plus SO4 2 minus. And we can split this one up too. 2K plus and an SO4 2 minus. Now, if we look for spectators, we see that sodium belongs out of there and potassium as well. So this is the net ionic equation. What we can see happening here is this HSO4 ion donated a proton to OH minus, and that's what made the water. And because it lost the proton, the HSO4 1 minus becomes SO4 and with a 2 minus charge, one less H, one step more negative of charge. So that's an example of something that's called an acid salt. The second type of reaction for our consideration is what's called a precipitation reaction. These things are pretty easy to understand. The only thing is to predict them, you have to have a pretty good grasp on understanding what things are soluble in water and what things aren't. So what happens in a precipitation reaction is two aqueous solutions react with each other, and one of the products that they make doesn't dissolve in water. Here would be an example. KCl dissolves in water. That's aqueous. Silver nitrate dissolves in water. It's aqueous. On the right-hand side, we have potassium nitrate, which does dissolve in water, but silver chloride is one of those things that cannot dissolve in water. It's a lower halide with a silver ion, and so we have a solid product. So that's called a precipitation reaction, and this is what we call a precipitate, or sometimes for short, we'll abbreviate that as just PPT. So to try and make a prediction about this, you have to think about what the possible combinations are. And it's sometimes helpful to think about this in terms of an ionic equation. This is Na plus and I minus. This is Pb2 plus and 2NO3 minuses. Now, of these ions, which are the ones that could possibly go together and not dissolve in water? Well, group 1 salts and nitrate salts are always soluble. And so when Na gets together with NO3, well, that's just going to be aqueous. So that's going to stay as Na plus and NO3 minus. But when lead and iodide get together, well, that's a lower halide with a lead too, and that's not soluble. So we're going to have to write this together as PBI2. That's our solid, and that's the precipitate that's going to form. So in order to be able to make good predictions about these, you have to understand those solubility rules and know pretty well uh, which sort of things are not going to dissolve in water, and that's the key to understanding precipitation reactions.